Fill her up. You are listening to the Gas Digital Network. Michael Malice here, and let that be your welcome for the next hour. We have a very special guest today, probably my favorite journalist on Twitter, Nick Monroe. Uh, It's true. Nick, you and Tim Pool, to me, are the best journalists out there right now, and here's why. Because you are, I don't know what your political views are, I don't care what your political views are. As a journalist, someone's job is to give me information, and that information is used for me to make my own judgments and to stay informed about given subjects. And if people who follow you on Twitter or don't follow you on Twitter, they should. You are the hardest working jur- – you're an independent journalist. You're just a kid out of your house in Cleveland. But you are – every issue, you're there – uh, doing the homework, you're capping people's reactions, you're doing deep dives into who are these people, what's their background, the social media mining. These are the kind of things that a real reporter should be doing, and they're often taking your work and, and repurposing it for their purposes. And again, your agenda is never apparent. It's like, okay, here's here's uh, Christchurch is a good example. Christchurch happens, horrible tragedy. And you're just going after all the blue checks, saying, here's what people are saying. And you've been getting heat as a result of this. Now, how did you get... So if people don't follow you on Twitter, it's NickMon1112, correct? Correct. Okay. And now you're at 40K already. You're, you're blowing up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really crowded, but I love it because it means people can... You know, the more people, the more information I can get at my hands. You know? I mean, you, do you have any journalism background? Yeah, I uh, won an award during my uh, stint as a game j- journalist at Game Ranks and the Escapist magazine. So I am accredited in that respect. I I mean, I've been recognized by this uh, SPJ as someone who's worth watching as a powerhouse, is what their quote was. And I really hope that the judge who made the, the comments when he gave me that award is like happy right now with where I've gone, you know. But I mean, did you go to J school? No, I am just a s- someone who came out of Gamergate, and I was like, I might as well give this games journalism thing a try. And I was able to see all the fundamental flaws with what they were doing, and I was able to essentially fix that and make it into strengths. You know, he, he, you to me are what uh, the promise of the internet was supposed to be about, be about which is some kid with his computer and a lot of spare time and probably like all of us a little bit on the spectrum, so is very good at focusing on things, can (laughs) find lots of information without leaving their house and have that information be revelatory and of use. What is your process when you're covering a story? I try to see what the audience wants to know, like relevancy. Relevancy is the number one thing. Like It's why I started applying people's Twitter bios to tweets. Like when I screenshot their tweets, I add their bios to the side. So, you know, what, what the heck this person is and what, what their position in, you know, the world in our society is. And it's gone such a long way because people actually have context. Right. Right. So what, let's compare that to the mainstream press. What do you think the mainstream press gets wrong the most? I think (laughs) like, accountability is number one like what in the world is the process of which they present information i have no idea sometimes where these people are coming off in their articles and the christchurch situation is the climax of that and it's very you know evident in their attacks on pootie pie because the new zealand shooter said subscribe to pootie pie before he committed those atrocious which is a meme that phrase yes. is a meme. Yes. Okay. Let's provide context and to people. It, it, Pootie Pie disavowed it immediately, but the backlash from the media and the, like, they were, like, figuratively choking him out. And you, Pootie Pie is someone who's never buckled. But 
after this latest media onslaught, he had to unfollow everyone, me included. Like, it broke my darn heart. But, like, it, I, I guess he thought it was necessary at this point because people were making death threats against him. They were targeting everyone on the, his following list, you know, and making these assumptions that automatically there's this guilt by association. And really, this is the climax of our, you know, political culture of polarization and fear that the media has cultivated. Like, the, the deck has been, you know, shuffled up until the New Zealand shooting. And now, now we're getting the cards played out. That's what I see. I feel like the age of internet innocence is over after the New Zealand shooting. I feel like this is the first time that anyone has been able to game the system in order to get the maximum amount of impact and reaction. And I don't know if we're gonna survive, man. Like, I don't know if we're able to hold ourselves together and keep the balance that we had before. I, I, I'm you get what dis- I'm saying? I, I know what you're saying. I disagree with what you're saying. I'm gonna disagree in two ways. One is we never had balance. I, I think I think a lot of it was uh, sleight of hand, and two, are you are you a comic book fan? Are you familiar with the Blue Lanterns, like the Green Lanterns? The Blue Lanterns oh. mantra is "All will be well," and I think things are getting better every day. I think the fact that people are being called on their bullshit daily is wonderful. The fact that PewDiePie isn't buckling is wonderful. Let me give an example. I retweeted some guy. He said, "Why am I not surprised that PewDiePie follows people like it was Molyneux and then there were a couple other names?" And you're like, I'm like, why are you surprised that PewDiePie is interested in people that you're interested in? I mean, the idea that if you're following someone, like every news organization follows President Trump, right? He's the president. In the, it's gone from repeating what someone says is an endorsement to being interested in their point of view is an endorsement. I mean, we're all interested in what bin Laden had to say. Does that in any sense mean we're joining Al-Qaeda? But there's a shamelessness to it, in my opinion. I want to get your thoughts on this in the idea of let's use emotion to force the outcome that we had wanted previously. Now we have a further excuse. They've always wanted to destroy PewDiePie because he's giving an alternative mechanism to reaching kids. And this is a threat to their uh, hegemony. What do you think about that? I think you're I think you and I are on the same page, but we're just looking at the situation from different angles. Like we're at this point where someone said it yesterday to me. I asked everyone, you know, my followers for their thoughts, and someone said we listen to respond instead of listen to understand. And I think yeah. that's amazing. I think that encapsulates just about everything that's going on right now. And I'm really going to push for that sort of, you know, slogan slash mantra going forward because beforehand i was very focused on the far left and focusing on making sure that was equally recognized to the far right but i i you know there's no denying what happened in new zealand was a far right ideologically motivated attack by a, a crazy person and no one in their right mind is clapping and cheering on the slaughter of 50 innocent people. But because of the polarization of our social media age, people are thinking that. People think that's what is something that's more commonplace. And that's what scares me, man. Like, they think they're cheering on, like, the death of 50 people. Like, there's a human level sensibility beyond the, you know, political stuff like in the back of our minds we're all human man like i feel like we understand that and i feel like that's where this fear is coming from but like inverted you know Uh, see i disagree i don't think we are all human i think to be human is to have a conscience and to have independent thought so maybe we're all human in a biological sense but in an ethical sense i think there's lots of people who on a fundamental level lack what it means to be human and I don't think what you're saying is particularly new. Like you rem- I, I'm older than you. Every time there was a school shooting, mothers demand action will say, this is what you wanted. All you NRA people, are you happy now? This is what you asked for, and this is what you got. And they genuinely believe this. The distinction is, okay, with 9-11, they played that footage over and over and over and over again for months and months on sure. the TVs. And... There's, but there's this distance to it. You aren't inside the buildings as people are panicking and trying to escape. 
you, you don't see the first person point of view. And it's something that is has reciprocated itself like this f phenomena since 9-11. Like, you know, the the, uh, yeah, the rise of the war on terror and the rise of ISIS and stuff like that. They've never really like they've been always been able to contain these sorts of shock value videos. Right. Like, you know, ISIS beheadings, you know, you're like, oh, crud, it's an ISIS beheading. I'm not going to watch that. Right. And like there w with the other tragedies that have, you know, happened, it's always been sh filmed by accident or from some far, far off point of view that wasn't right in the middle of it as it was happening. And this is what the New Zealand shooter has, you know, capitalized on and taken advantage of. He went for the pinnacle of our technology, the pinnacle of it, you know, using high tech equipment, you know, yeah. GoPro and stuff like that. And giving a first person perspective of what he was doing. And that is the thing that underlies all of our shock right now like that's never really happened before ever and so on one hand while i think the social media companies and the internet service providers are going heavy-handed on the crackdown on talking about footage and talking about the manifesto i can kind of see where their reasoning is stemmed from because of that oh uh, yeah you know what I, I mean i i agree with you it's easy to demonize them but at the same time, if their platform is being used to uh, uh, virally spread a video that the killer wanted to be spread as much as possible, which is the most horrific thing imaginable, which is children and, and people being killed by the dozens and shot by whoever knows how many, for them to be like, you know what, this is not something that people need to be seeing to this extent, uh, certainly not in my house. I can wrap my head around that. But let's talk about your... Oh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. I, I, just, ha I just thought of like... You know how Alex Jones said the, you know, he went with the idea that the Sandy Hook shooting was a hoax, right? Right. What if they had, you know, uh, what if that shooter had a GoPro? Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about what happened with you and Christchurch because you I, must not have gotten any sleep over the last few days. And you've been having oh, interactions with, <laughs> you've having issues with YouTube and with Twitter. Can you break down what you've been covering and what the rea and the blowback and, and everything like that? Because it's been a long thing, but it's oh. interesting. <laughs> uh, is this is this PTSD? Are you the real victim of <laughs> Nick? Are you the real victim of Christchurch? Is that what's going on here? I, 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 look, I am you at look, a Nick, crossroads. You have your you have your Red Bull right there. It'll give you wings. You'll be fine. <laughs> and your beer. <laughs> okay, I'm a monster guy, but we'll let that go. Okay, so. Let's go back and rewind to when this first broke out. I first saw the Christchurch shooting story from Mr. Medicare, Mr. Antibully on Twitter. And he said that some guy posted on HN and said he was going to shoot up a mosque. And I saw that and I was like, what? And then I went looking immediately on HN and I made the guess that it was on the poll board. And I happened to be right. And I was able to find. Wait, can you explain? Same... To, can you explain to them what the poll board is for people who don't know? P politics. Okay. It's where it's like four chance politics, but like eight chance politics, you know there. Um. So, someone in the comments of Mr. Anti Bully's Twitter said, you know, this is his his Twitter account, and so I got a link to the shooter's Twitter account, and he had posted his manifesto and all that there, and his pictures of his guns and all the messages on them, and. I went to 8chan to essentially verify that this was a match. And lo and behold, the 8chan thread that the shooter made had the same profile picture that they used for their Twitter, so I was able to find it. And I hastily scrolled through, and I realized what was going on Like immediately. I did not watch the video in full. Like... This is something that I think is an important little bit of nuance because of what's going to happen when I post the videos. I posted the, the New Zealand shooting videos to my Twitter. Yes. And the first way I did it was I used – I put a heavy, 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 heavy warning that, like, this is shot content. And I used Twitter's inline video system. That was a mistake. Like, people were horrified immediately, and I was like – I, I, I gotta take this down and like 
you know, redo this. Yeah. So I jumped on the WordPress. Wait, and can I interrupt they have you? It- Let me interrupt you. Because something else that you do, let some others don't, when you delete your tweets, you always say, I have deleted this tweet for the following reasons. So that's one way that you're different from many blue checks who are just deleting things that pretend they don't happen. You're you're living the transparency and putting making it clear what has been removed. I want to point that out to people. Oh, uh. Oh, thank you. Because like it makes me feel better because I, I I have felt so many questions about my work because of this Christchurch shooting, and I put it on Video Press, uh, WordPress is video uh, platform, and I put a heavy like a heavier warning saying people die in these videos, but this is newsworthy. This is something that's happened, and the world needs to know that this happened. That was my mindset going into it. Yeah. And by this point, I was in a little bit of shock. And it really started to set in as the night wore on. And I tr- tried my best to go through the rest of the 8chan thread and assess the shooter's Twitter account to get a fuller picture of what was going on before stuff was deleted. And by then, the shooter had been apprehended by police. So there's you know that and the Twitter account. And by the time I posted all of that, hundreds of people were, had retweeted and the Daily Beast, a, a freelancer for the Daily Beast or something, contacted me and wanted me to give them the rundown of what was going on. So I'm briefing them. And at the same time, I'm going through and assessing the manifesto, going through and finding the relevant portions people were highlighting, like the Candace Owens thing. Yeah. And I'm putting all that together. And then, like, a few hours had rolled rolled by, and I'd been on the local news. Like, someone sent me a screenshot and said, you are on the local news station in North Carolina, Raleigh, I think it was. And I saw my thread, and I saw, like, a news guy, a broadcaster, pointing at my thread. And, you know, he's, like, (laughs) pointing to my tweets. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I didn't mention that at first. But then Twitter decided to delete the videos from, like, the tweet I made about the videos. And let me just, on a, on a little bit of a tangent, not only was the tweet deleted, but the WordPress cracked down on me and basically said, we are going to ban you from our site if you don't take this down, like, right now. Wait, so let me ask and, this. When, when you say Twitter deleted, did often Twitter forces the user to delete a tweet themselves. Yes. They forced you to do they it or they did it? They blocked my account. So, but they, they, they blocked my account. But they made you delete it. They didn't delete it themselves, correct? Yeah, and okay. I complied immediately because yeah, of course. I like I need to get this thread going. I need to keep things going. Sure. Like if, if I waited around for support to respond, days would have passed. I could still be in limbo yeah. for all I know at that point. And what? I didn't want to go down that road. Sure. And what went went through your head when you got that notification that you're locked? I was on the local news. Like that that was my first thought. Like I was on the local news. This is public interest. Like Right. You can't do that. Like, I was on the news. People are going to see my thread and, like, want to you know what's going on, and they're not going to be able to. And it goes totally against what Jack had, you know, espoused on the Joe Rogan show. Like, he made an emphasis on public interest. Like, more – I thought he had more loyalty to that than he does. But, lo, you know, now, in retrospect, I – don't think Jack, it was Jack's fault. I think the New Zealand police had contacted Twitter and said, you need to take down this content right now. Or, I mean, and the reason I... Okay. I was just saying, it could be... Sorry, a, no. go, no, finish your thought, please. Okay. Like, I think the authorities in the police supersede what Twitter's, you know, own obligations are. I think they can force their hand to act on content much more so and they have much more power over it than we have previously understood let's take a sec to talk about the free state project what's the free state project the free state project is a program to help people live liberty what happens is a lot of libertarians have taken the pledge to move to new hampshire and change the culture which was already very heavily pro-liberty more toward a freedom direction. They've got 400 state representatives. Each represents about 3,400 people. They get paid an annual salary of $100. $100. 
New Hampshire's number one financial literacy. It has the second lowest unemployment. No helmet law, no seatbelt law. Number one state for cryptocurrency. No general state sales tax. No state income tax. No tax to machinery. No capital gains tax. No inheritance tax. No death tax. This is like Galt's Gulch, but you're actually invited to this one. Plethora of gun clubs, private shooting ranges, no laws restricting knife ownership, except for convicted felons. What's their motto? Live free or die. They've reduced the state budget, thanks to the Free State Project, by 11%. 11%. If you go to fsp.org, you can learn more about moving to New Hampshire and supporting this. We always talk about liberty. They're actually doing something about it and moving the needle in our country in a positive direction. They're not a political organization. They don't endorse anyone. They're a tax-deductible nonprofit charity. If you go to fsp.org slash join, you can learn more and you can support, put your money where your mouth is. I get hungover very easily. Let me tell you guys about flyby.co, promo code YW15, you get 15% off. What's flyby? It helps you process alcohol-induced toxins, support healthy liver function, replenish lost vitamins and minerals. What does that mean? No hangover. You guys saw the Arduous March. You saw the Arduous March too. Me and my friends got very drunk. I wish I had this. If I'd gone to flyby.co and used promo code YW15, I would have gotten 15% off. Here's the ingredients. DHM, it's made from a Japanese raisin tree. It boosts the liver's ability to process alcohol. Milk thistle, bodybuilders use this. Prevents liver damage. Prickly pear counters alcohol inflammation. NAC increase, increases glut, glutathione? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? No, you don't. But here's what it does. It prevents oxidative stress and helps the liver process those toxins. That's why you're hungover because of toxin in the body. This isn't like one of those fasts where there's all this nonsense toxins. This is real. Alcohol is a toxin. Flyby capsules are packed with nutrients your liver needs to help you break down the alcohol. And if you go to flyby.co and use promo code YW15, you will get 15% off. It could be as simple as if enough people report a video for having disturbing content, it's automatically flagged and pulled. And it could have very easily been, theoretically, I'm just saying, or am I wrong? No, I understand that. Like, but here's the other thing. We're at this point where we can't even talk about the manifesto. And I know that because my tweets about the manifesto were taken down. I have had 16 tweets taken down from my thread. My thread was gutted like a fish and mutilated. And I don't like that shakes me to my core because I can't do my friggin' job here if you're taking down my Twitter threads. I'm trying to tell people what's going on. And what I, I my approach is, hey, this is what was said. And you can see for yourselves and make your own conclusions like uh, that sort of value set is colliding with what the, the New Zealand authorities are trying to say and try and to suppress the story. So it puts me at odds. And when I see 8chan, 4chan, Kiwi Farms, uh, BitChute, Gab, all being like, they're, they're being extorted. They're being extorted by New Zealand's inter internet service providers and their government to basically bend the knee to this censorship. So it makes me question the extent of what the first amendment covers in terms of platforms because what has gone on it, it these past couple of days has really opened my eyes to how much power you can flex if you're a government or the cops like well a couple of things first of all obviously as you well know new zealand doesn't have a first amendment right number one number two yeah, is yeah, yeah. as i've always said you know, for cons when conservatives argue for regulation of social media, uh, the government does not want more information out there. At the very least, let's get completely cynical about this. This New Zealand tape is showing people in New Zealand that the government's not protecting them uh, in their place of worship, their most sacred of places, and it's making them look bad. So any organization, uh -huh. whether it's 7-Eleven, Goldman Sachs, the library, your school, the people who make that beer, the people at the top want to cover their ass. <laughs> That is a completely human universal uh, thing. So if you have a shooter who's clowning you, 
who's making people feel terror, making people feel unsafe in their places of worship. This is the one place we can all agree on. It's for peace and, and whatever. Um, f- that's making them look bad. So at a very simple reason, they're going to want that to be shut down. You you have a point. And someone who is familiar with New Zealand's online, I'm mean, not online, their, their, their dispatch system, their dispatch system technology and all that, they tested it for them. And this system they have in place all across New Zealand is apparently top of the line stuff. Like this is technology that would blow your mind. And yet, despite all that, when the New Zealand shooting happened, it makes them, it makes it all look like a paper tiger sort of performance. Yeah. And I think that's an underlying like motivation for this, you know, suppression here like they don't want their authority eroded on the international you know spotlight here yeah now talk to me what you were saying how they were trying to get the isps to bend the knee for kiwi farms dissenter and a couple of other bit shoot What, what, what do you mean can you explain that please okay so it's something called dns black holing which basically means these websites don't exist in the eyes of the internet service provider's official register. Like they've stricken it from the record until they, you know, vow a a more heavy handed sort of system in order to, you know, moderate the the discussion around the New Zealand shooting. And it is really a disrespect to the families of the victims here to, hear me out here this is going to sound you know you might disagree with it you probably will disagree with it but that's cool um it's more of a disrespect to the families of the victims to make this a free speech discussion rather than talking about the immediate politics involved with what the shooter's motivations were and the ramifications of that by making it about the suppression of content that is something that rustles the jimmies so to speak of people in america like it opens up a door that doesn't need to be opened and New Zealand authorities can shut that door, but they're not shutting that door. Right. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting was you, a lot of times on Twitter, you have all these people who work in the corporate press and they feel understandably that their job is to have some knee-jerk reaction. And when something this horrific happens, I, in my view, the mask drops and they really show their true colors. And I think for most people, when they're in a traumatic emotional experience, that's when the real self comes out, when you can't pretend anymore. And some of the responses to this were really quite disturbing that you were capturing. Can you go over some of the best ones that you saw? And how did you find okay. them? Um, the number one one I found was Chelsea Clinton, and I saw it on the trending list. <clears throat> so like... Uh, Chelsea Clinton was confronted at a vigil for Tr- Christchurch and accused of Islamophobia for her comments about Elian Omar elsewhere. Like uh, her comments about um, Elian Omar talking about, you know, Israel and all that. And Chelsea Clinton's response condemning Omar and, and all that. Somehow in the minds of the far, 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 far left, that makes Chelsea Clinton complicit with the shooter's actions. And Donald Trump Jr., of all people, had to come to Chelsea Clinton's defense. Like, it's upside down world when you see something like that. It's upside down world. And that is just one of the many things, you know, that people people's reactions were. Like, uh, elsewhere, you know how there's the, there's always been this, you know, qu- more quiet, you know, racism against white people like you don't you might agree, disagree about the extent of you know overall but in light of the Christchurch shooting people are calling white people evil and like one person said some people choose to be white over being human like yes that was the one i saw yeah <laughs> what right this is crazy town like i don't understand like you know I saw the same sort of uh, sentiment echoed from BuzzFeed people and, you know, the, you know, the, the usual sort of journalists here, like I can just pull up my thread if you want, like, yeah, read um, about some of them off. Okay. Um, so, uh, 
uh, let me see. Uh, oh, mosque shooters alleged manifesto filled with dangerous memes from the uh, Daily Dot. Hard-hitting reporting. If we can't read the manifesto, we have no idea what those memes are. And uh, yeah, I read the manifesto, and there's really <laughs> there's no memes in the way that the, the Daily Dot is trying to say there are. Right, let me explain. They're and, not memes in the same sense of pictures, but there are phrases that are associated with meme culture that are throughout. For example, the, the Navy SEAL copy pasta, right? This is a stock yeah. answer. Like if I say, why the chicken crossed the road to get the other side, that's a stock joke. This is a stock response. It's a paragraph of text. And he included that in there verbatim. That's what they mean by, that's an example of a meme in this sense. Yeah, thank you for buying me time to get some <laughs> pictures up okay so it's time to silence the leaders of this terrorist cult forever let's start with imam of peace tommy robinson gert wilders sam harris people like that they need to be removed from society permanently authorities must act today and I mean, that's 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 the call for the gulag who's that from uh some guy named naveed and he is some sort of doctor that works with refugee camps and in a follow-up tweet, he says, deprivation of your liberties is imperative in order to maintain peace and order. Jesus. And then he's like, you are preachers of extremism with blood on your hands. Canadian and Australian authorities need to arrest you both as a matter of urgency before any more innocent civilians are massacred. It's amazing. I need to remove you from society. You're an extremist. Okay. Checks out. Uh, and there is the angle that Gamergate is responsible for the shooting. This is something that people are seriously putting forward. And I'm going to quote this GitHub lady. Um, memes, 4chan, 8chan, YouTube are tried and true tactics at this point, and Gamergate sent th set them. And I I've seen bits of the Christchurch shooters manifesto and it's full of memes. How many journalists, law officials will be able to identify them, understand the context and know what they're dealing with? I still can't get over how many, how very different our lives would be right now if people with power had taken Gamergate seriously. I'm at this point where I think they want to put Gamergate on trial. Like they want to have a show trial in order to condemn the entire movement. And I'm someone who was you know, at the start of Gamergate. So I am willing to go on C-SPAN on national television and I'm willing to stand trial for the crime to Gamergate. Well, let me talk a little bit about Gamergate because I think I talked about it last time my other show, Nightshade, and I think it's an important oh, point. Yeah. And it goes like this. It we, gives me time. We all, we all remember, we're all old enough to remember, it wasn't that long ago there was a big anti-bullying movement, right? We got to stop bullying in high school. Bullying is bad. No one deserves to be bullied. The people who are traditionally bullied are the nerds. This is a trope since the 50s, right? They're the kids who get shoved in lockers. They're the bad social skills, can't get laid, so on and so forth. They're the prototypical incels. As soon as those bull as those nerds stood up for themselves against uh, the far left, immediately bullying them became not only bad, uh, good, but downright mandatory and necessary. And we're seeing it right here that the, the, these kids went from being victims of bullies to everyone being a potential school shooter without uh -huh. batting an eye. And I, I'll just solidify that. There's this tweet that went around from Emma Kennedy, some sort of writer lady. Um, everyone on 4chan and 8chan should be on a terror list. Yeah. Every single incel. I couldn't give a single shit about the, their freedom of speech. Harsh? I don't care. I am raging that white radicalization is being ignored and allowed to flourish. Enough. That's the one I saw, and I retweeted it with the Frank Herbert quote, which is one of the most important quotes out there, which is, when I'm weaker than you, I ask for freedom because that is according to your principles. But when I'm stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that is according to my principles. The idea that, but for Christchurch, this woman would have felt differently is false. This is giving her a rationalization to further her totalitarian ideology. And I think increasingly what I'm shocked at and I think without precedent, Red Bull and beer, great combo. Uh, I think what we're seeing, which is without precedent, is that the right on this time is holding their ground. And they're not saying, you're right, we need to come together. Like, fuck you. This has nothing to do with me. I could not be more against this. And for you to tie this in with me, with my worldview, let alone my race, is demented and we're not having this conversation. And I think this has happened as a result of culture only in the last couple of years. You make a good point, and I'm so happy we're having this discussion just because, like, that is a very good point, and I think that's a very important one. Like, 
Alexandra, I mean, we're at this, you know, we've reached too far on the polarization where it hits Uncanny Valley. Alex, <clears throat> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said, thoughts and prayers is reference to the NRA's phrase used to deflect conversation away from policy change during tragedies. It makes me want to scream into a pillow. It makes me want to scream into a pillow with stuff like that. You That's know, and you got Brian Stelter he's saying global white supremacy terrorism like yeah. this is it like this is too far in terms of using you know never let a good tragedy go to waste yes as, as it's been said and this is so crystal clear here and i think that's what is making people stand their ground i think they understand that this is too far for them to use an incident and it's also there's an insincerity to it because it's verbatim the same thing no matter what happens. If it's a radical guy shooting up uh, 50 Thank victims you. in New Zealand, if it's someone getting kicked out of their school, if there's a TV show, it's verbatim the same thing. So it's like, obviously, this is not a function of you're reacting to given inputs. This is the script w is written beforehand. And now you're just filling out the recipe depending on the um, uh, uh, facts of the day. Let me ask you this. When it comes to all this kind of stuff, what do you think the media gets wrong the most? Humility. And uh, yeah, like to jump off on what we were just talking about, <clears throat> humility. I, am, I have a tweet up from NBC News, and he says, Extreme, extremism researchers and journalists, including me, warned the company in emails, on the phone, and to employees' faces after last terror attack. They're, they're talking about YouTube, that the next one would show signs of YouTube radicalization again, but the outcome would be worse. I was literally scoffed at. He is using New Zealand to say, I told you so. So humility is the, you know, something that, that they could get wrong the most. Like I, they are unable to just take a second and shut up and feel sorry for the victims. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you rather... Like, let's suppose I was someone who's for gun control. I would rather be wrong and have there be yeah. no school shootings than be like, oh, look, it happened again. I'm I'm glad I was validated. I'm not glad I'm validated. If I'm predicting Shoot something off in the air. Yeah. If I'm predicting something bad is going to happen and it happens, I'm not hooray for me. I'm smart. I'm like, fuck, this sucks. Yeah. And we can't go backwards either. Like, we can't just unsee all of that. And like when it comes to the censorship, I understand and respect the authorities' decision with what they're trying to do with sure. banning the video. The manifesto, on the other hand, I don't. That is writings from the you know perpetrator themselves, and people need to understand the ideological motivations that underpin him going into this without that knowledge we're unable to have a conversation about what to do like if you ban the manifesto you're banning and any, any sense of hope for us to basically know what kind of ideological discussion goes too far it, and yeah i'm sorry go on no it's really amazing to me how there is a blatant uh, understanding and agreement and, and claim that social media radicalizes young white men. But if you put forth the argument that social media has a part to play in radicalizing young Muslim men, immediately the conversation cuts to commercial. And it's like, yeah, these are tools that are used to radicalize people. And to admit that yeah. is not hard to say. And this is an idea that is basically going to be the main theme of an article I'm writing for Culture. I felt it was necessary to say something about this in writing, so I'm going to put all my thoughts down on paper here, or hypothetical paper, digital paper. <laughs> um, so censorship causes radicalization, and this is how. You have uh, the free exchange of ideas in the town square, You know, the survival of the fittest when it comes to ideas, the good and the bad clash, and the uh, eventual outcome is something that rises up. If you take out the bad... You know, the, you know, everything labeled as bad from just a little bit bad to the extreme bad. Yeah. I mean, I understand there's limits, but 
going too far pushes people underground into echo chamber forums where they're free to you know have these discussions without the heavy hand in moderation and they're amongst themselves but with a similar sort of mindset and they have no springboard that contrasts their mindset to you know compare their ideas off of and that's what's scary because then it starts to just fill in the echo chamber room with their own reality of, of ideology. And Let that's me, how you get the shooter. Yeah. I want to stop and take a second to tell you guys about our new sponsor, acemarks.com. What they are, are handmade Italian dress shoes. No promo code. If you go to acemarks.com, you can see what they have. I have never been more excited by a sponsor. When they emailed me, they said, we have a new sponsor. Go to the website, acemarks.com, and choose a pair of shoes. I dropped everything almost literally in the subway and picked one out. Here's why. You need one pair of dress shoes will have you set for life. You wear it to a job interview. You wear it to a wedding. You wear it to a date. People notice quality shoes and handcrafted Italian leather will last you for years. And usually their prices are exorbitant. What Ace Marks does is it gives you these shoes at affordable prices. And you could have your cheap jeans, you could have your cheap suits, you have these nice shoes, and all of a sudden you look like a star. Here's what makes Ace Marks high quality shoes. They're handcrafted in Italy by a fourth generation artisan family made with premium leathers. It's got a memory foam cushioned insole that molds to your feet over time for all day comfort and they're flexible and light. I'm holding one right now and I honestly feel like it's glowing in my hand because I'm so excited to have a pair of these gorgeous shoes. And the thing is with quality gorgeous shoes, they're versatile. Wear them to work, wear them out. People will be like, who's that guy? And you won't tell them at acemarks.com, let them waste their money. You'll save the money and get the quality at a fair price, acemarks.com. Nothing goes better with a nice pair of shoes than Heshi socks. H-E-S-H-I socks.com, promo code WELCOME30 to give you 30% off. Why do I love Heshi? You can wear them with sneakers. You can wear them with dress shoes. You can wear them to bed. You can wear them around the house like I do. They're pillows for your feet. They're thick but they're antimicrobial. It kills the bacteria, keeps your feet from stinking. They're made with high-end Pima cotton, so they're breathable. They're getting you laid. You've got the different styles. You've got the basic. You've got the fashion. Wear them the dress shoes. Wear them with sneakers. On Valentine's Day, you could have treated yourself. Now we're way past Valentine's Day. But the Heshi socks will still be your best pair. Go to H-E-S-H-I-Socks.com and use promo code WELCOME30. Trust me, just take a look. Good socks will save you money because those fancy socks are expensive. These are affordable and quality. You're welcome. As a gamer guy, what was your reaction when you saw the notification that PewDiePie followed you? Uh, it was back during the New York Times thing, and I had basically railed into the reporters who had gone after PewDiePie, and he saw that, and he was just gave me a bro fist, you know, and he said, "Thanks for having my back, bro." And like after that, n nobody who follows me ever since have I had the same sort of excitement reaction. Like PewDiePie ruined it for me, man. Like I'm not, I don't get excited when anyone follows me anymore. I'm just like. Huh. I mean, after PewDiePie uh, uh, had to unfollow everyone, I I I got Keemstar because Keemstar yeah. Keemstar picked up the story about PewDiePie. So I traded them PewDiePie for Keemstar. So like, I guess you know it, it all evens out. Yeah, but what what was I your suppose? reaction? Did you freak out completely? I screamed like a schoolgirl. Because yeah. <laughs> I when Junior Donald Trump Junior followed me, I felt like I was having a break with reality. He follows me too. Oh, okay. Okay, no, this isn't a competition. You lose. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a measuring contest. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so, again, who, so who now would be your ultimate follow? Mm. I guess the only one left is Donald Trump himself. Like, oh, that's, yeah. that's like, I guess that's the final peak. And, like, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath, but yeah, maybe he, someday. <laughs> he only follows 45 because he's the 45th president. 
Oh. So if he's going to follow you, he's going to have to knock somebody off. Well, he unfollowed Ann Coulter, so maybe that was a slot that he could uh, uh, reserve for you. But you know that Cross he must... Fingers. I mean, it must be weird knowing that he's reading your stuff. Um, It's fun. I mean, at this point, I'm used to it. Like, I've embraced the all eyes on me sort of approach and i'm just like i've really let my guard down in the don't screw up sort of sense like i'm just gonna throw the best i can at what i do and apparently that's good enough for people and it works out like yeah. but there, you, there's a harmony to it but you do screw up and when you but the difference is when you screw up you own it you're like oh this was mistaken i'm deleting it here's where i had the information wrong you do that all the time and that's fine. Yes. It, and, and like this New York Times guy, he, he got yelled at me and said, delete your whole thread for, for some information about the shooting that happened yesterday. Um, I compared the a Twitter account with a similar name. They had a picture of the New Zealand gun posted. And they basically made a tweet swearing some kind of, you know, insult and, you know, implied revenge. And... I had this tweet up comparing that to the information that the uh, authorities there put out and they got the name wrong and they had to do a correction for that. And that made me put this, keep the tweet up longer than I had wanted to because I doubted the information the police were putting out. But then like th it became clear to me that it's irresponsible to be reckless in this sort of thing. And so I took it down, you know, on that sense of value alone. And sure enough, like 10 minutes after I do that, they come out with a new picture of the suspect and it looks nothing like the dude from the Twitter account. Yeah. Like it was a, a case of mistaken identity. And I, I, I apologize for that. I apologize to everyone who follows me who saw that bit of misinformation and I made a bad judgment call. Yeah, that's that the thing. That's the nature of the beast with w what I do. Like, you know, being immediate and in the moment means that there is more of a possibility for me to screw up in real time. So I just have to accept that. Like, if I don't accept that, I'm screwed. And, I'm and, screwed, man. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when they do it, when they, when, when the corporate press does it, there's, there's, uh, it's always swept in the rug or the corrections the next day. And there's a, you know, it's very famous on Twitter how the original tweet with misinformation will have like. 10,000 likes, 1,000 retweets, the correction will have 50 likes and two retweets. And this is how they operate. Yeah. And all the mistakes are always in one direction. At this point, I don't give a, like, I, I don't care as much about retweets and likes anymore, to be honest. I thought about this when Twitter announced, uh, mistakenly, they miscommunicated that oh, retweets and likes were going away. Like, clarify that then, because that, that was my understanding. Say, tell me what they said uh, and how people interpreted that wrong. Like retweets and likes, uh, like they said, retweets and likes were not going to be like a priority or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Sure. And they said it in a way that made it le look like they were re removing it entirely. But it's just an interface thing. Retweets and likes are still going to be publicly visible. You just have to like click or something on a tweet directly or something like that. Like they wouldn't be visible from the feed itself. Okay. Or, or something along those lines. But like it's that little bit of a you know difference that is night and day for a lot of people apparently because they were strong in their reactions, and I was at first. But then I thought about it some more, and I really care just about getting information out to people at all. Like people, when people reply, you know that's more than enough for me. And like you know they they re reply with reactions and their feelings, and I take that into account and they reply with other information and that helps me round out my idea like my idea of a thread like I, I i'm fueled by people's replies and i'm fueled by what they show me too like i take that into account along with my own research and that's what makes the final product that people apparently love like i don't understand your perspective you know, praising my Twitter account. Like I'm trying to put myself in your shoes, looking at my Twitter account, and you said you said all those high praises, and man, it made my heart feel real good. But I can't understand what I look like from the outside in. Well, they don't make these anymore. They're from Bahamas. They're for a Michael Jones, I think, is a basketball player. So these are the shoes. Um, 
I'll tell you what the difference is. Um, it, it's it's I, I the praise. First of all, I like you. Remind me a lot of me when I was younger, because I like anyone who's got hustle and who's got moxie, right? And I'm oh. a, a big fan of people who are doing the work, the legwork. And when I look at you're the only person, and and I'll I'll say this publicly, you're the only person I've ever told that says DM me as much as you want. When you want me to retweet your stuff, I won't always do it, but you can do it as much as you want. You do that all the I time. Remember that. I and remember that. And I'm glad that. to do it because you, if I want to know um, what is happening about a breaking issue, if I go to CNN, it's all going to be, you know, anti Trump, right? And you are going well, to. It's all words. It's all right. It's all sound bites. It's all sound bites. And you are actually doing the legwork and are saying, all right, here's a good cross section of the reaction. And you're not saying shit. Again, I don't know your political views and I don't care. You're like, here's what's happening right now. And you're grabbing them before the people have a chance to delete it. People, I don't even know who they are. And I'm like, okay, this is actually really pertinent and really useful. And you have some skill for grabbing the ones that are actually the most disturbing and interesting and informative. So my friend Don, who's a self-described uh, heterosexual, is a huge fan of yours. He's and but the thing is, who else is doing what you're doing besides Tim Pool? I mean, do, who else do you I, see as your colleagues? Uh, um, I, I I just I just I would just have to say Tim Pool, like in terms of like you know, in terms of kinsmanship, right? And what you're describing, like, um, the art of what I do comes from Gamergate. I. When people came out and had this mass criticism of the practices of online journalism and blogging, I took all that criticism and I looked at it and I said, how can we do this differently? How can we approach this differently but get to the same objective and get people what they want? And this is the end result of that. Like it's a trial and error process. And like, I, if you tell me a few years ago I'd be here right now, I would be like, what? Right. What? If I follows me, what? Like, um, I just don't think about it. I just let, you know, the, the course of, you know, day by day happen. How many hours a day are you in front of a computer? Are you at a point where your legs are atrophied and there's a Professor X thing going on? <laughs> no, um, I actually have my phone. So, like, I, I can sit outside. I do stuff outside. You know, okay. I, I go places and I look at my phone. But, like, my DMs, I can't read, like... <laughs> there's there's so many DMs and my DMs are just a a, a hub of traffic these days. Like, do it's you so do my, crowded. Do you do my trick with the quality filter in the DMs? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a a, a checkbox you could have in your Twitter settings that says like quality filter for DMs or only people you only see DMs of people who follow you follow. So I get a lot of DMs oh, that no. I never see. I'll oh, do that. Because it's so, well, I guess you don't want it because you want to hear from everybody. I don't. So I have open DMs, but the DMs from people who I don't follow, I don't ever see. So for me, it's like a roach motel because these are messages I'm not interested yeah. in seeing, but let them feel like they're yelling at me. Well, I, I, I have to mention that. Like when, I, when they took the video down and I said Twitter deleted my tweet, like over 100 people, uh, you know, into the hundreds of people have messaged me saying, hey, dude, do you have a link to the video? Yeah. One person offered me money and they gave me a phone number to contact saying my brother's a crackhead and he'll Venmo, Venmo you the cash. Like that really shook me. Like what? Like was, you, that, you want to see this? That was probably Shkreli. Violence? That was Shkreli. Shkreli was trolling you from prison. Oh God. Uh, um, um, yeah, but like that is something that really brings back to the point of like this suppression and censorship, like by going too far with this, you're adding more of a morbid curiosity yes. value to the, 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 the shooters, you know, live stream. Like you're making people want to seek out this content because you made it forbidden fruit. Like, I sat down and watched the full video like a couple of days after the fact. Like I could not, you know, yeah. but I realized my imagination of what it was was going to be worse. You know, I, I feel like that's another important point. I feel like people's imaginations were, are, are able to take the actual physical events that happened and magnify it into some sort of just more of a nightmare scenario than it was like 
people's fantasies are feel not just their politics but just their outlook on the world and so i watched it on pornhub uh <laughs> uh i remember when drudge no one broke. Looked at pornhub. Uh, I, I remember Sorry, i remember when drudge broke and there was a lot of pushback from the corporate press. This guy's not legitimate. Don't pay attention to him because he was a threat. He was doing the job they were supposed to be doing. And when they were, by their own admission, covering stories like the Winita Broderick rape story, I had her on the show. And it was very, very um, uh, credible, her, her take that Bill Clinton had assaulted her many years ago. Have you gotten heat from mainstream journalists? Uh, no. I've done interviews and i've talked with mainstream journalists and we've had a fair discussion i've taken this christchurch situation and said whoa okay it's time to step back and say if i can have a conversation with people on, on the other side of the aisle now is the time yeah and so i've done this in in-depth interview with a cnet reporter and i'm glad i did because she made me realize that my problem is the rules and as as they are on these websites aren't clear. Yeah. It's not that they're over politicized or biased. It's just that they're not clear. We neither and so I like yeah, you would have, have a problem if Twitter was a left wing site. There's nothing wrong with that. I would was, know the limits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh what do you so you and Tim are kind of breaking the the mold of what it means to be a journalist. What do you think mainstream journalists get wrong the most? <sighs> I, I think that the, you know, they aren't working like they, they think they're above the people instead of on the people's eye level. Yeah. And like, that's wrong. That's what's creating this divide, you know, beneath all this conversation and fury. Like they just think themselves as a position above like as a an extension of the political you know sphere you know and the politicians and the institutions themselves and they're serving that to make sure they secure their own legitimacy and it's not working it's not working at all and people realize that and so i think of myself as one of the people and i talk like i'm one of the people i like I just see 42,000 followers as, oh, it's a lot, it's crowded, but you know, it's a lot of people I can talk to, you know, what you we're on an even playing field online. We're all on an even playing field and we need to understand that. But we're not because are you verified on Twitter? Nope. So that's, I am not a blue that's one of the things that happens. So Twitter's verified mark, which I, blue check mark, which I have, obviously, uh, no, I'm not saying that in a glib way. This is a way of them saying that we're not all equal. This is Twitter's way of saying subtly that these people's opinions are more important or more valid or matter. It used to be a way to verify your identity, but now it's clearly become a caste system because how else would they unverify, let's suppose, Laura Loomer or Milo? Well, clearly that's still Laura Loomer and uh, still Milo. So in a literal sense, the verification uh, badge did not mean verification. Yeah, if it was a verification badge to verify someone's real identity, I would have it, but this stigma that's been created surrounding the blue check marks. I mean, you know, I, I take the piss out of them all the time. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You know, no offense to you, Mr. No, blue but mark. I agree but, with you. Yeah, it's it's helped. I think it's made the system worse. I th I think you're right. I, this conversation is reeling to me. Like part of the problem is it's made the social media system worse because it makes people feel like they're above others. And they have an objective way of saying, oh, it's not my ego. Twitter's telling me this. I mean, their point is something that is real. And the other thing is, for people who don't know, the, when you're verified, you have a verified tab, right? So that means I can see it, uh, mentions only from other verified people. So at a certain point, if you're like Rihanna, I'm sure you're going to be in that tab all the time. Otherwise, your mentions are un unmanageable. But I think for many of these types, they're only interested in hearing what their colleagues have to say. And that will further fuel a disconnect between them and the mass audience. I, I don't think members of the corporate press understand just how loathed they are by many people in mainstream America and how glad many people in mainstream America are to see them being humiliated. People ask me for advice. Like they say, hey, I'm going into journalism school. You have any advice? And I just have this thousand yard stare. <laughs> like, yeah.
this thousand yard stare. Like one, you're asking me for advice. Two, do you really want to be me? <laughs> like, <laughs> and like three, who knows where we're going to be in a few years and if any of this is going to even matter. Have you been kicked like, off of any platforms yet? Oh, um, I, when I reported on stuff in the United Kingdom last year, someone in the UK decided to target tweets they viewed as anti-Muslim, but they weren't. I was just having a discussion about immigration. Like, I think over you know migration and too many refugees is bad for the refugees because if you have too many refugees you know in one country the system you know is unbalanced in terms of ec economics and just social stability for everyone and so they came looking for a better life and they're going to end up disappointed if things go down the pooper like it's bad for them and that's you know that's where i'm coming from with that you know i don't make it an ethnic sort of thing i, I you know i i try to look at it from their point of view and it, over the year you know the year since i've done that sort of you know research and discussion i've had that sort of viewpoint validated in many senses in terms of the stories that have come out but that's a discussion for another time but yeah twitter banned me for that and i had to guess which tweets they banned me for what do you mean I by ban though? What I, do they do? Like literally, ban means a lot of different things. Uh, they gave, they said Twitter is banning you, and they didn't cite any like rules that I broke or tweets. Like so they they suspended they, your account. Yeah, they suspended my account. Oh. I was suspended for a month, and okay. uh, twenty nine days later, like I remember just because like I thought it was weird, you know, weird. I was able to catch this on the twenty ninth day out of like thirty days, but like. 29 days later, I looked at archive is right. And archive is like, I looked at every tweet that people were archiving from my account. And it, it, in one and two particular instances, there were many archives made like there were like multiple, it was archived multiple times. And so I'm like, this is it. This is what the tweets that w were targeted in order to get me banned. And I'm like, Twitter, here's some tweets. Are these the ones that got me banned? I didn't mean what people say right. or think I meant in those tweets. And they're like, oh, whoops, here you go. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and wow. I just went on my way. Like, I, I love Jack. Like, I love the website he's made. And I don't hold any animosity against him for any of this. Like, I realized, like, he could not have predicted the way things have, you know, unfolded as they have and i try to show some respect for that yeah i, I mean the, people talk about you know when you're in a bad way how to manage being unemployed or you know not getting laid it's also hard to manage success and then it becomes like oh first world problems but it is a problem when you have a show or a book or a musician that is successful that is stress and it's not an easy thing to work through. So yeah, when Twitter becomes something that the president uses to get himself elected, I'm sure he wasn't thinking this is going to happen. And then who's going to sit you down and be like, oh, if the president uses your platform to get elected, this is what you should do. No one's there. There's no guidebook for him. So I will defend him in that regard. And and uh, you cover a lot of people on Twitter. Who do you think has the shittiest takes or consistently shitty takes? Oh, <laughs> Well, because the game again, the games journalists have always been a crap factory. But like, if you want, hmm, I can't. I know if I looked, I could think of a list of names. But like, I would say in terms of, of UK politics, Mike Stuckberry is oh. one that's advocating, uh, you know, far left, you know, violence. And me and him got into a tiff about that, and you know, we basically had to come to like a ceasefire just to move on with our lives. So like, that is the last sort of heated incident i could think of in terms of you know all this but can i be honest with you about something like do i have the shittiest takes is that it no <laughs> um you were mentioning about you know like journalists and all that like and what they do um i've had offers to work for milo tommy robinson ezra levant wanted me to go new to new zealand and um, Ali Alexander, you know, opened the door and said, Hey, you can write for us here. Like every time I get that sort of offer, like I look at it and I'm like, 
that's lucrative, you know, like there's benefits, you know, I, I, I could have a stable pay, but like I'm unable, if I work like that, I am putting myself in a pigeonhole and I am unable to have the flexibility and the amount of accountability if I go there. Like, you know, if the an outlet I work for, for screwed up, it looks like I screwed up and vice versa. There's that going on. But, yeah. you know, if it's just me, it's, a you know, the buck stops here sort of approach. And also, so you, can't, the, you can't call them yeah, out. Sorry. If You can't also call them out if they're being full of shit, if you're working for them. I would do it. Like, <laughs> I would do it so, so hard. Like, it, it, and that is something that would pretty much end that ar arrangement very quickly. Like, I don't think I could, you know, shut my mouth up. Like, I'd be horrible at it, like, for the sake of a job. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's time for our last question. What was your favorite part of the interview? Uh, I, 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 I like the part where we got to the bottom of people's like approach and, and reasoning for all this. Like you and me like disagreed at points but we're talking about the same point and i so when you when we disagreed on our our viewpoints we're still t you know approaching the same goal and it, it it really opens like my eyes to like maybe there's hope for some you know positive discourse elsewhere because of that like if we're able to have a discussion about the same sort of idea and come at it from different angles and be able to have an understanding mutually about it there's hope like there's hope and the sh you know the shooter wanted to agitate the media <laughs> and bring us to a civil war and a race war and make everything go to hell and i think our conversation here today goes against what the shooter wants and i cannot be more happy about that you are welcome